Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and today we're going to do a software tutorial. We're going to take a look at the software of choice that I use in Six Sigma. We're going to look at SPC Excel. Hope you enjoy it. Welcome to Complexity Made Simple and the latest software tutorial using SPC Excel. And we're going to take a look at measurement system analysis uh, for a second time. But this time we're going to take a look at measurement system analysis for attribute data. Okay, so <clears throat> we have a pass fail situation, some kind of some kind of cosmetic inspection, looking at the surface finish of a product, maybe looking at printing quality. That type of thing, something that's um, something that's pass fail in nature, rather than measurable in nature. And um, the look of the MSA is going to look slightly different to when we are looking at measurable data. And here's the way it's going to look. And of course, like previous measurement system analyses, one of the first things you have to do is to go and select a sample out of the process. Now unlike measurement data, measurable data, we would normally take a sample which is random and that is very important when we are using measurable data. But when it's pass fail we're going to do the opposite. We are going to deliberately select it's a deliberate selection of the pieces to be used during the MSA. And the way the selection is going to be made is that we should have 50% of them should be rejectable. 50% of them should be acceptable. Regardless of the defect rate in the process, it has to be a 50-50 a 50-50 split and the reason for that is because if a mistake is made we need the mistake to carry the same weight so if you can imagine here we've got 20 parts look uh, in this MSA if we imagine that 18 of them were acceptable but only two were rejects because that represented the actual the way the process worked that, that represented the reject rate. If I make one mistake here, clearly with the two rejects, I've got half of them wrong. Yeah, so it, it makes the mistake look a different size. But if I make a single reject here, well, it's an 18th. I can't work out what an 18th is in uh, percentage terms. But um, if I make a single mistake with the acceptable parts, then clearly the, the, the level of mistake is different, the percentage of mistake is different. So it's very important that we have 50-50. And also it's very important that we decide a true standard. So here is the true standard in this column here. So in other words, someone who is the company holder of the standard someone who is considered to be an expert has sat they've stared at these 20 parts for three days they are absolutely certain half of them are good half of them are rejects okay so that's very important there is a true standard in the case of again in the case of measurable data there is no such thing as a true standard um, we are just looking for repeatability so we've selected Deliberately, we made a deliberate selection. 50-50. We've identified the true standard, whether it's a good one or a bad one. We've spent a lot of time making sure that that's correct. And then, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to hold up the piece to each operator essentially and we're going to let the, the operator or indeed a system it could be a, a piece of equipment that's making this judgment we are going to let the equipment or the measurement system make a judgment 
And if the judgment agrees, like here, true standard was a reject, operator identified it as a reject, very simple, give them a score of one. Now the software is gonna do this for you. All you've actually got to type in is the letters, the, the R's and the A's uh, in the table. Uh, and the, the software will do the scoring for you. If of course the assessment is incorrect, the measurement system gets zero. And then very simply, all we're going to do as part of the MSA <clears throat> is we're going to assess how many did they get right as a percentage. So you can see here, look, this system got 15 out of 20. Well, that is 75% correct. That is known as the effectiveness of this measurement system. So there's the there's the effectiveness. Um, and simply what we're looking to do is achieve 80% or more. Okay, so it's a, it's a very simple procedure. Uh, we can work out the effectiveness for an individual operator as we did there, 15 out of 20. We could work out the effectiveness for the whole test so you can see there, look, we scored 48. 48 were correct out of the 60 attempts that were made to assess parts. So if I just clear this down, 48 out of 60. This measurement system is 80% effective. So that would be the first measure that we would, uh, we would look at. How effective? is the measurement system. Then there are other backup statistics for this. So let's take a look. The first one we've looked at, we were 48 out of 60, 80% effective. Then the next one is the probability of a false reject. What type of mistake are these measurement systems making? Are they giving us false rejects? In other words, they are too tight are they giving us false accepts? In other words, too loose. And finally, what's their bias? So if we divide one by the other, the false accept into the false reject rate, we get the bias. If the bias is above one then we are too tight and typically that's what we'd want the bias to be because too tight means we keep the mistakes in house maybe someone with a little bit more time can reappraise the parts and then the parts can be let out of the building so there are the four statistics that come out of MSA for attribute data, effectiveness, false reject, false accept, and the bias. Now the software is going to do this for you, so let me show you the software doing this uh, a second. So let me just um, go over to Excel, and I've got Sigma Zone waiting for me here. I'll show you how the whole thing gets set up. So you would go gauge capability. You're going to create a template and it says how many operators do you have let's just say we have two operators how many trials are they going to do how many repeats let's say they're going to repeat the test twice and let's say we're going to give them 10 parts we click OK so you get this empty table now this is the only time you need to use the reference column we are going to give them the parts. Now, we're going to give them in random order. So we don't want to give them the five good ones followed by the five rejects. We want to give them in random order. And we probably even want to randomize this, this pattern as well. Um, so we're going to give out the parts in random order. Five good ones, five bad ones. When the results are in, 
we simply type in the letters. For the results that we saw. Yeah, so we just build that thing up. Okay, so I'm not going to type all those in. I'm, I'm going to take the opportunity just to show you where the, the help and the tutorial uh, is on SBC Excel. So if I go to About here and I go Tutorial, just open this up a little bit so you can see better. Then there's a set of tutorials here. One of them, look, is MSA. If I drop that list down on the bottom, look, there's, a, there's an attribute version there. It just shows you the, the template that I've just set up, look, really. Um, the 2 by 2 by 10 parts. So it just shows you that. But there's an example data set here. So if I just click, if I just click on that, it'll open me a table that's uh, completed. Yeah, so there's the completed MSA. And as I say, most important that you mix the parts up, that you give them back to the operator in random order. Don't give them out in the same order the second time. Just make sure that the operator has no memory of the previous assessment of a particular part to keep away as much bias as possible. They should be able to judge each part uniquely. And then if we go Sigma Zone, MSA Gauge Capability, Attribute Analysis, it'll work out those those statistics so here we are look in this zone here let's just color this in whoops in the yellow fields there we go there there's the statistics we've got the four statistics for operator one the four statistics for operator two and the overall results so overall look we've got a good measurement system 88.75 for effectiveness Operator 2 is much better than Operator 1. Operator 2, you'll notice, doesn't have any bias. That's because they didn't make any false acceptance mistakes. So, of course, we can't divide. We can't divide by zero in that case. Um, the other operator, though, their bias is less than 1. So, although overall, look, the bias for the system is above 1. We're too tight. Actually, this individual operator is too loose. And so what we'd want to do is, although we've got good results, we'd want to give this operator some extra, uh, some extra training maybe, just to tighten their standards up and make sure that what we have uh, is too tight. A little bit too tight, keep the problems on site. Here are the mistakes they made. Look, operator one, um, made a false, one false um, reject. They made two false accepts. Here's the mistakes that operator two made. And then here's the statistics that's that's been created from those results. And uh, pretty much that is MSA for attribute data. Now, just a couple of things before we, we, we close this tutorial. Um, number one, if you want to improve the measurement system, Often people are carrying little rules in their head, little standards, maybe little phrases that are easy to remember, uh, little phrases that help them to, to keep their standard in the same place all the time. So it's often well worth interviewing the best uh, inspectors to see what rules they use. Uh, that would be one way to improve the system. And the other thing to say, of course, is attribute data is rubbish. So if you can get away from this type of measurement system, all the better. Measurement is always better. Uh, Pass-fail is poor for lots of reasons. But the main reason is because a reject rate, pass-fail type data, attribute data, you need such a lot of it. And even when you have a lot of it, it gives you such a poor estimate of how your process is performing. So... Here's how to assess your measurement system, but if you can get away from this type of measurement system, all the better. But this is SPC Excel, little tutorial, 
Sigma Zone, uh, how Attribute MSA is done using SPC Excel. Well, I hope you found that uh, useful. Uh, if you've got any questions about that topic, or indeed anything to do with Six Sigma, or Lean for that matter, give me a call and I hope to hear from you soon.